guys. It's been a while. Um, been pretty busy, so I haven't got a chance to you know create a video of reactions. But today I have time, so <laughs> I'm gonna react to this video. What it's like to be a billionaire in France. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. I'm already assuming it's about champagne and chocolate, but <laughs> or food. But I guess we'll find out. In 2019, Credit Suisse did a study on wealth and found out that the French are more wealthy than Americans and Germans. Let's talk about how the other half lives and see what it's like to be a billionaire in France. As of April 2021, okay. Europe's billionaires are one trillion dollars richer than they were a year ago. That's pretty incredible. Wow, the only really? The that has really benefited is LVMH CEO Bernard Arnault. If you're not familiar with LVMH, the full name is LVMH Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton. Yep, oh, yeah, Louis Vuitton. At the time of producing this video, his net worth is at an incredible $195 billion. Wow, that's He's crazy. He's behind Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. And it's crazy the fact that guy doesn't even do like a tech company. It's all luxury brands and drinks. I mean, Hennessy, but it's like you would naturally assume every billionaire out there is like tech related, but I guess he's not. <laughs> he's quickly catching up. Watch out, Jeff. Much of Bernard's wealth comes from his 97.5% stake in Christian Dior. Bernard lives in a 21,000 square foot 17th century mansion in Paris, France. The price of that mansion is relatively unknown, but given how much space there is, it's expensive. He also <laughs> has a $30 million mansion in Beverly Hills. He also owns two additional chateaus in various parts of France, as well as a third mansion. Bernard owns an island in the Bahamas that's worth $35 million and owns over 35 wineries around the world. Wow. Finally, he that's has a crazy. massive art collection from notable painters like Pablo Picasso and Andy Warhol. Bernard also pledged to donate $226 million to rebuilding Notre Dame after its devastating fire. Our next billionaire is one powerhouse Man, that's of a crazy. woman who is making her own path and wealth. Francoise Betancourt Myers is the granddaughter of founder L'Oreal Eugene Schuler. She is also the richest woman in the world after her mother passed away. But the relationship wasn't very positive. Francoise tried to have her mother, Lillian Betancourt, declared mentally unfit to manage the family's $19 billion fortune. But the mother-daughter duo reconciled just in time. Francoise and her family own about 33% of L'Oreal stock, and she has served on the company's board since what? 1997. Even though she was born into massive wealth, Francoise prefers playing piano and writing over fancy parties. She definitely doesn't fit your conventional billionaire. She's focusing on her author career. She also pledged $226 million to repair Notre Dame. So what is Francoise spending her money on? Well, she seems to be taking advantage of what she's inherited from her mother, like a mansion in one of the most expensive neighborhoods in Paris. But other than that, she's not indulgent in the glamorous lifestyle she grew up in. So we can safely say that this billionaire is living a cozy and practical life and not spending money on fancy exotic cars. But time will tell. Yeah, right. <laughs> Our next billionaire is definitely a self-made man. In 1963, Francois Pinault started a wood and building materials company called Caring. Then in 1999, he switched Caring's business to luxury goods after he bought a controlling stake in Gucci Group. He ran into much success. Huh. Francois and his family also own Christie's, which is a major auction house, and he owns the- You know, what I was thinking about, what I think is fun about Gucci is like, nowadays when we hear that word, we naturally assume luxury. But back then, imagine trying to uh, pitch your company and say it's Gucci, whatever. It's just like, man, people probably were laughing back then, and now everybody's like, whoa, it's so amazing. Investment company Artemis. At the time of making this video, he has a net worth of $50.1 billion. Francois wow. is definitely Crazy. spending his wealth on art. He owns a 3,000 piece art collection that's worth over a billion dollars. What? It includes works by Pablo Picasso, Piet Mondrian, and Jeff Koons. Francois is going to open his own museum called the Pinot Collection, which is set to open in an 18th century building in Paris. By the way, his son is married to Salma Hayek. Francois donated $109 million to rebuilding Notre Dame. We're noticing a trend of French billionaires spending their money on art and restoring historic sites. In yeah, I was about to say that. It was just like... I feel like when I react to like billionaires in the US, it's all about like luxury cars and houses and yachts and all that. But it's interesting how in France, it's all about like um, art 
and wine. <laughs> It's kind of interesting. 2011, Francois paid $32 million for a 19th century mansion in the Chelsea neighborhood in London. He also owns the wine estate Chateau Latour. We have a double feature for our next set of billionaires. Brothers Alain and Gerard Wertheimer own the French luxury brand Chanel. Huh. Their grandfather, Pierre Wertheimer, founded the company with Gabrielle Chanel, better known as Coco Chanel. Oh, oversees the that's interesting, Chanel. So was that, that was her last name? Wait. Better known as Coco Chanel. Wait, wait, wait a second. Their grandfather, Pierre Wertheimer, founded the company with Gabrielle Chanel, better known as Coco Chanel. Wow. Chanel so that was real. That was just her last name. That's crazy. He's the watch division, and he actually lives in Switzerland. Given that the Swiss know how to make watches, this makes sense. He's oh, also yeah. found hanging out in New York City. The brothers are each worth about $33.1 billion at the time this video each. was produced. That's crazy. Adam seems to spend most of his money on houses. He has homes in Sheridan, France, and Saint Etienne, La Fille, France, as well as Washington, Connecticut, of all places. It's also rumored that he owns a really grand apartment on Fifth Avenue. The brothers own wine valleys both in France and Napa Valley, as well as breed racehorses. They can what? be found most often at Chateau Canon with their families. And they even renovated a historic house with six bedrooms on the property. The French Man. know how to cook, and they have inspired countless dishes that we consume worldwide. In France, you can find some of the most famous and fanciest restaurants around. Oh, yeah. Not only is the dining sophisticated, but it's also luxurious. Wow. The French company Michelin Guide has set the standards for fine dining with their Michelin star rating. In Paris, billionaires have endless choices in Michelin star restaurants. Le oh, Pays yeah. de Lan is one of the most Whoa. expensive, with plates ranging around $286 per person. 286 per person that's insane but man look how nice it is wow the restaurant has three michelin stars and is quite the haute affair Alain Ducasse what I, I really like these chairs or couches it's cool I like the real like design or what is this like what man that's crazy Plaza Athene is an even more expensive restaurant with plates ranging around four hundred dollars per Whoa, person. Look at, but for billionaires, man, look at that chandelier. That's so crazy. Wow. <laughs> ranging around four hundred dollars per person. But for billionaires, this is chunk change. Paris is the capital of fashion, so it should be no surprise that the shopping oh, is yeah. top notch. French billionaires have a choice with the massive amount of shopping districts. The most famous choice for luxury brands is the Avenue de Champs-Élysées. This 1.2 mile stretch is the ultimate destination for retail therapy. Louis Vuitton, Hugo Boss, and Guerlain are just a few of the luxury labels on the street. Rue wow. Saint-Honoré is home to some of the most upmarket retail regions in Europe. There, billionaires can shop for Armani, Prada, and Tom Ford. It's also a place of history where Coco Chanel once lived. Then there's wow. Avenue Montaigne, which was once known as a place to mourn loved ones. But today, the only people that are mourning are those who drained their bank accounts from shopping. <laughs> this street is only for the serious spenders wow. with boutiques for Louis Vuitton, Givenchy, Armani, Dolce & Gabbana, and Gucci, just to name a few. The original home of Christian Dior is a five-story structure that overlooks the area. From enjoying historic sites, draw- Man. Uh, I'll go back for a second. Uh, the area from enjoy that's so crazy look at that like wow imagine living right there <laughs> historic sites driving exotic cars to dining in the finest restaurants in the world french billionaires have a lot of choice like some rich french person can live right next to the eiffel tower in a mansion for 280 oh wow i was just about i was just saying that like imagine living right there but apparently there is somebody who was right there $280 million. 280 million. That's crazy. Not only is it next to the French landmark, but it also sits along the Seine River. Imagine having the Eiffel Tower as your backyard. Yeah, it's like, That's what? That's just an example of what it's like to be wealthy in France. Since France is accessible to multiple countries in Europe, travel is a breeze for the wealthy. They can hop on a private jet, get a car, or even hop on a train and be in a new country in a matter of hours. Wow. Not to mention, France has so many options for getaways and excursions. Of course, we can't forget the wine. Many French billionaires own wineries and other companies to help grow their wealth. And ever since France decided to get rid of the wealth tax, the rich are only going to get richer. When wow. you're a billionaire in this country, it's easy to show off your wealth and not have to worry about breaking your bank 
bank account. The rich kids in France more than likely come from old money. Their families oh, are yeah. deep into culture and history since it's the very fabric of their being. These kids are well educated while being spoiled with designer clothes, exotic handbags, and some of the finest champagne they'll ever taste. But they are also being primed for taking over the family business. These kids are being educated in the finest schools, with some even being sent to boarding schools. Since many of them live in Paris, the fashion capital what? of the world, their regular shopping trips include lots of photos and high heels while browsing designer brands. But we have to wonder, how many of these rich kids will go the path of Francoise Bethencourt Myers and forge their own path? We aren't even thinking about the rich kids that don't have Instagram accounts and are probably hanging out in their man- yeah. Well, I mean, at the same time, as much as, I don't know, I just feel like their parents shouldn't be spoiling them so much, like, I could just see these kids just spoiling, like, spending all the money away and just ruining the companies and whatnot, but, who knows? and sweatpants. Either way, the future generation of France's wealthy population will be interesting to watch. If you yeah. were a billionaire in France, what would you spend your euros on? Don't be shy. Tell me all about it in the comments. Well, that's all for now, my friends. Stay tuned for more great videos from the richest. A la prochaine. Hmm. I mean, that's a pretty interesting video. I mean, I mean, I guess if I was like a billionaire there, I would definitely, um, It'd probably be the food and wine <laughs> but uh uh i mean i don't know the designer clothes thing it's like whatever but it's pretty interesting um to see the difference uh, mentality um the, the fact they're more focused on art and rebuilding history i think it's pretty cool because i feel like a lot of you know these other like rich people in the US, like they just kind of don't care about history, I feel like, but I don't know, that's just my assumption. But I think it's cool how they're spending money to try to build, rebuild the Notre Dame and whatnot. So it was a pretty interesting video and it's cool to see the possibility, like things you could do there. But that's crazy how you can literally stay at a place near the Eiffel Tower, so. But uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave me a like, subscribe, and thank you very much.